So this is Kristen Noe Jukes and today I really wanted to talk about making my own ink filled water brushes. So um, a lot of you know that there are these Jane Davenport mermaid markers. Oh, not this one, these ones. Um, and you can get these at Michael's and you can use a you know, 40% off coupon or actually right now there's a 50% off coupon. But, um, oh my camera to focus on this. Okay, and right now there's a 50% off coupon. So this set I think is around $42. And even with a 50% off coupon, uh, it's $20. So, you know, buying it with the coupon is the best bet you can go. But if you don't feel like you can lay down that much money and or you want different colors, um, there's actually been a way that I've been making pretty much these, you know, for years. So when I went to art school, I did a lot of mixed media work and I did a lot of traditional work and I really liked colored inks. And I also really love these water brushes. Like you would buy, you know, two, this would be an empty one and you would put water in it and then you'd use it with a travel watercolor pan. And I first came across these when I took a visual journalism class in, uh, art school and we would go out on location and we would paint in different places in our sketchbooks and then we would, you know, we could watercolor, we could do pen, whatever, you know, with these little brushes and I was like, wait, if I can do this and use this, then I can make my own brush pens because, you know, you can get brush pens that I guess are like this and then when I was in college, actually, I used to use these a lot too and this is... I don't know exactly this brand, but I know that Pentel makes these and they're called a Pentel color brush, I think. And you know, they always had colored ones too, but I always liked different inks. And so I would fill them up and make my own. So these are the mermaid markers, but you know, if you don't feel like you can afford them or you don't feel like, you know, these are the colors that you want and you want specific ones or if you already have a bunch of ink and I'll talk about what kind of inks I like to use in this as well then you can make your own so I'm gonna put these aside these are the ones that I have currently so I made tons of these in the past but um, these are all what I tend to do is when I use a water brush to a point where I feel like the bristles are getting kind of gross or the bristles aren't white anymore, um, then I kind of repurpose it into one of these because I feel like the ink makes this flow a lot better. You don't have to worry about, you know, maybe you have some ink, like some old watercolor on the, the blank brush and you, um, you don't want to contaminate your other watercolors. So that's when I take and I put inks and liquid watercolors in them. So, um, these are all the colors that I currently have. So I have a bunch of turquoise, a bunch of reds and pinks, and you know, I have some orange and gray. And I really like these. And these ones are filled with a mixture of different uh, fountain pen inks, and then Ecoline watercolors, and then Dr. PH Martin's uh, Radiant Concentrated watercolors. So that's what these are. And these are the swatches for these ones that I have currently. And this is a mixture, if you, I can zoom in, mixture of different fountain pen inks mostly and then the PH Martins. But today I'm gonna show you how I fill them and um, with some Ecoline watercolors because there's a color that I really do want and I'm gonna do it in this one. And um, I will show you how I do it. So this is also a drawing I did with mostly these brush pens. These brushes and then also I used a little bit of this highlighter kind of colored marker and then I, I was using my Dr. PH Martin's Bombay India inks in a dip pen on top so that's what these kind of more areas are but um, I'm gonna show you these so let me get my ink so most of my inks that I've used I love these J Urban fountain pen inks because J Herbin, I think I'm saying that right. I don't know. I could be wrong. Her Herbine, I don't know. Um, they do a lot of fountain pen inks that are like very pastel kind of colors 
or kind of just very distinct and beautiful colors. So pastel or more muted and they're just beautiful. So this is this one and then this is another J Herb Herbin. This is one and this is one and then this is their special edition ink which actually I have it in the box right here the 1670 collection and I keep it I actually this is probably one of the only inks that I keep in the box because the box I think design is just so incredibly beautiful it has like a mermaid and a globe and anchor and a boat and it's just very pretty like a sea theme and it's just so beautiful and it has shimmer in it and I'll show you too what this one um that has the shimmer hold on let me find it Nope, not that one. Oh, come on. It's not this one. Okay, I definitely think it's this one. Nope, it's this one. So this one actually has the shimmer in it. And so I just make sure that I kind of like mix it up a little bit before I use it so that the shimmer gets distributed into the ink and then it goes down into the tip. So you can put shimmer inks in these. The only inks that I don't recommend that you put, so these are all kind of dye-based inks that I use and dye-based watercolors. I don't know that I would use pigment-based inks, like I wouldn't use inks like these because I think they will clog up and kind of dry on your brushes. I've put some pigment-based inks like this in black in them before and they've been okay, but I feel like they kind of make the brushes crusty a little bit. So if you want to keep your brushes kind of nice and the things fluid, I would stick to dye-based inks only. So definitely fountain pen inks, but fountain pen inks are very expensive. So um, if you want a cheaper option, I would look at Ecoline watercolors. So this is about $5-ish for something on Blick. And you could fill the pens so many times with this, plus you can use this for other things. So, I mean, I think these are definitely worth it. There's also these Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant Watercolor inks that are beautiful and work as well. And these are also dye-based. And I don't remember how much this is because this is so old. I found this in my box of older supplies. Um, and then you can also go to a lot of craft stores and pick up kids liquid watercolors and those work just as good I think and most of the time they just come in bright primary colors but they definitely sell kids liquid watercolors in a bottle and if I can find a link to them I'll leave them in the description box below and then that way you know you can look and make definitely make more inexpensive versions of these. The other thing I would say is that these water brush pens, you know, you can go to Michael's and a set of four of these are $27, which I think is the biggest ripoff of your life. I mean, you can definitely get a 50% off or a 40% off coupon, but what I would do is I would look online at places like AliExpress. I found a set and granted, I haven't purchased it, so I don't know um, how fast it would get to you, but I've ordered other things from AliExpress and they all come eventually. I've never had anyone from AliExpress rip me off yet, so that's good. Um, but you can get a set of four of these for like $7 on AliExpress, which I think is an amazing deal, and that's with free shipping. You can also look on Amazon, and again, I'll probably leave a link for Amazon down below, um, and definitely get them cheaper there. Don't buy them at Michael's at all. I think it's a total ripoff um, to buy them at Michael's. But I have this one, this is an old one that I've used for watercolor and you can see that the brush tip has gotten kind of discolored and gross. Don't mind all the ink all over my hands. I'm constantly like this, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. So, okay, I'm gonna show you guys what you're gonna do. And you're gonna need something like this or like this. So this is a very large gauged um, syringe. So to be honest with you, I think we got these, I don't know what we had these for at all. I think I might have ordered them to fill fountain pen cartridges. So I'm not exactly sure where I got this, but you can probably buy a very large gauged one. You can probably get 
these at ink supply so I would assume you'd be able to probably buy them off gouletpens.com which is a fountain pen ink store. These are pipettes. So I got these from Dick Flick and again I'll leave a uh, thing in the description box, a link to them. And for five dollars I think or four dollars get 25 of them which is amazing because you can use these for all types of things and to pick up different colors things like that and you can wash them and reuse them too. So um, this is just like a regular pipette and I'll use this and show you since I have a link to this. This is just as easy you just stick it in you pull up how much ink you want you syringe it into the base of the pen and I'll show you how to do that and then um, whatever you have left you can just squirt back in to here and then you can just clean it out and so I've used this for years it has oh it has some ink in it from the last time um, I've used this for years and it works just as good so anyway obviously you want this to be empty and you want to twist off the top so when I first get these sometimes they have a little plug in the top of this and I always take that out. Now, if the little plug in the top has a little hole in it that is big enough for your pipette or your syringe to fit in, then I would just keep it in. If it doesn't have a hole or if the hole is too small, I would just take it out and don't replace it in because I feel like sometimes it's very hard to squeeze and get paint out of these or the dye based ink out of these to, um, you know to feed into the tip so I always take that out and I just throw it away <laughs> I don't care I don't feel like there's much use for it um, I think it's a little less messy if you keep it in if it has the little hole in it but if it doesn't have the hole in it then you're never gonna get the ink in here without something like this it's ridiculous some of the inks have a dropper I feel like this dropper would definitely work as well, but if your inks don't have a dropper, you're gonna need something like a pipette or a syringe. So, anyway, I wanted to make a brush that has, I'm trying to find the color I want. Here we go. I want this light lavender purple color. I don't have a purple one. And to be honest with you, I've never really liked purple all that much, <laughs> which is kind of funny, but I've been getting into purple a lot lately, so I kind of wanted to play around, and so I'm gonna use this one. These are dye-based, they don't need to be shaken up because they're dye-based, and so, yeah. But this is Ecoline. This is the pastel purple color, I'm pretty sure. There's my swatch on top. So all of these, I add a little sticker paper swatch on top and um, that way I can look at them all from above and see what colors they are. So take the cap off, have your little thing, take that part out if it's in there. Now I don't want to soak, um, squeeze up too much so I'm going to try and squeeze up probably about 22.5 cc's I think is what the measurement is on these, I don't really know. But I kind of look because some of the barrels on these obviously are huge. This one is really little, um, so I'm not going to put too much in. So just use the pipette, we soak up in the pipette, put it in here, and then put it in very slowly. You don't need to splash around. And so it's about half full. doesn't have to go all the way to the top. To be honest, I would make sure it doesn't go all the way to the top. And the way to clean this is to just have your bucket of water and kind of just um, flush it out a couple times and then lay it to dry. And then it's clean. So I'll close the cap. Or actually, I don't close the cap. So put it back on, whichever way it turns. This one, for some reason, turns to the right. And then there it is in the front. So kind of to prime this, instead of just squeezing the barrel to get the ink to come out, what I do is I kind of dip the brush in the ink and kind of swirl it around to start to prime it so that you can start right away. And then that way 
you know, you're not like squeezing all your ink into here because if you squeeze too much, it'll like all pour out the top. So let's see. I am gonna, I'm gonna practice on this little card. That's a nice purple. It's a really nice light purple color. See, it's more pastel and I really like this um, for making my own. You can also, you know, add waters to these. And so if you have darker colors, even if the, you get the kids watercolors that are really bright and vibrant, you can have water to make pastel colors. See, that was me squeezing a little too hard and it popped a giant pop out of that. Take a little bit off. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna put the lid back on. And while I do let this dry, I'm going to show you what I do. So if you notice on some of these, what I do is I take a sticker paper and I cut it into a strip and then I put the ink on the strip and then I wrap it around and then that way I know exactly what color is in these. So like I always label all of my inks and things like that so I can see I do it with my pens because then, you know, it just makes me, I'm like, oh. That looks really pretty because sometimes the barrels are blue, sometimes the barrels are pink, sometimes the caps are all different colors when I make these. So for this one, let's see if I can't find my sticker paper. Yep, here we go. This is just like a sheet of like old label paper that I either tear things off of or I don't. So what I do is I cut a little strip and cut it about that long. And then, where did that little thing, that little thing, here we go. I'll put it on top of here, so I'm not writing. All these little marks are little ink drops that have dried. This is a piece of paper. <laughs> and I use, oop, here we go. Use the brush to spread some ink on there. And then I let it mostly dry. Where did I put the cap? Did I lose the cap already? Nope, there it is, okay. So I'll let that mostly dry. See how different it kind of, it depends. It When it's dark, it's a lot um, darker when it's wet than when it's dry. Um, and I'll let that dry. And then once that's dry, I'll just wrap it around the end of this barrel. So yeah, so that is my DIY kind of mermaid marker. I guess that would be, uh, you know, what these names are, they're mermaid markers, that I've always just called these my, you know, colored ink brush pens um, made with the water brushes. And, you know, there's a lot of different water brushes on the markets with different tips. Um, some have like little flat tips and some are bigger and some are smaller. And so, you know, you can get a variety of things with this and you can put a variety of different media, a variety of different colors, you know, the possibilities are really endless with this and that's what I think works as an advantage over these. Now mind you, I have ordered the, I have this old, the older set and I have ordered all four of the new sets and they are currently in the mail. So once I do get them, I am gonna do swatches and compare them to the old colors and you know, talk about how I like them. I've also ordered, there is a set of kind of dupes of these from Paper Chase uh, in the UK that I have ordered a set of and it comes in a roll, um, like a little fake leather pen roll. And it is very, very cheap compared to these. And so I'm definitely gonna compare the quality and compare the ink and just the brushes in general. They're, they almost look exactly the same as these except for they don't have a sticker. Um, they are different colors though, so we'll talk about that. But for now, here is my DIY mermaid marker tutorial. And 
I've been making these for years and I love them and I love them for sketching kind of on the go and they're just like regular brush pens only they're colored and you can make them in many many different colors so I hope you enjoyed this and if uh, you liked it I would love if you would subscribe and like my video so thank you very much and I'll see you next time